Hello, my name is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to start part three of Flexible Rails, and we're going to install MySQL and RESTful Rails. Now, previously we installed Instant Rails, and the reason we did that is because in my office we have students that come in and we train them, and we want to get them putting up content in days, not weeks, and that's a great mechanism to get them started and show them how to program in Ruby on Rails. But you may find the console a little bit irritating, so we're going to go right in and install MySQL and use the command line prompt and skip instant rails in this series. So let me review what we did in part one. We installed Ruby using Windows, and then we installed Rails using Gems, and now we're going to install MySQL on Rails. So just go to Google and type in installing uh, Rails on Windows, and a great number of tutorials will come up. We're actually looking at one right here. Let me bring one up. Here's a blog I found on the web all about Ruby, and it has a full install of Ruby on Rails using the Windows installer, which we used earlier, and shows you how to install MySQL. We're going to go through this step by step. Now, there are a number of great tutorials on Ruby on the web, um, and sometimes they don't have everything you need. Just look at the tutorials, and you may say, hey, that works, and that doesn't work. Just remember, uh, some of these tutorials do have holes in them. And they do change because technology changes very rapidly. They may work today, but it won't work tomorrow. So you've got to stay current, and you've got to kind of uh, filter through some of these uh, tutorials. This one actually was pretty good as far as getting um, MySQL installed on Ruby. We're going to go through it right now. Uh, so what I want you to do is go to uh, dev.mysql.com forward slash downloads. We're going to download MySQL, install it, and then we're going to go into the INI file and change the binding address and then we'll be ready to go with Ruby. So it's not too difficult. Let's proceed with it. So here we are on dev.mysql.com forward slash download. It's going to download that MySQL database and install it on our system. And let's go down here and just click on downloads. Here's an EXE uh, setup. And then what you want to do is just install save that to your desktop or my documents wherever you save your zip files uh, and uh, unzip it and then click on the executable let's do that right now I've saved that zip to my hard drive right onto my desktop and I've unzipped it and here's the setup and all I need to do is basically just click on the executable and it's going to take me through the installation process and we're going to step through that step by step so what we've done we've actually uh, went to the MySQL download and we've downloaded MySQL executable and we've unzipped it and we're about to go through the setup process but before we do that let me show you that MySQL is not on this computer so I'm going to actually go to the command line and I'm going to type in MySQL dash 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 version and we can do that we can see it's not found on this computer and we're going to go through the process of now of fixing that so we can work with it on Ruby on Rails. So click on the Setup button and click Next. And we'll do a typical install. And note that it's going into the Program Files MySQL folder and start the installation process. Hit Next. Next. And now let's configure the server. Hit next, and let's do a detailed configuration. Uh, developer machine, of course. Multifunctional database. We'll go ahead and hit next. Uh, decision support, yes. Yes. We're going to go for best support for uh, multilingualism. Next. Uh, let's get off the launch, the MySQL server automatically, and go to include bin directory. Next. Let's put in a password. Yet another reason to use the install as opposed to instant rails. Next. And let's execute. So we're almost done here. Now that you've installed the MySQL database, you need to go into the my.ini file and add the bind.address equals 127.0.0.1. Let's do that right now. I'll go ahead and copy this. and let's go to the C drive and go to program Here my pro here's my program files folder click on that and let's navigate to the MySQL database folder 
There it is right there. And let's click on MySQL Server 5. And there's my INI file. Navigate to the bottom of it, and we'll go ahead and paste in our line of code. Go ahead and paste that in. And let's go ahead and save the file. And we are ready to go. So let's go back to the command line and check it out by typing in the mysql.execute uh, command right here. I'll copy that and paste it in my command line and see if indeed we do see our SQL database. Let's bring up the command line. Run. OK. I'm going to paste in that command and return. There you go. I do see a SQL database. Isn't that very nice? All right. Uh, we're ready to go now with Ruby on Rails and the MySQL database. Let's uh, install RESTful Rails. So now that we've got the MySQL database installed, we're going to install RESTful Rails. And you can get RESTful Rails, of course, from TechnoWeenie. And we've done that in previous. We go to the TechnoWeenie website. Let's click on that. And click on uh, More Ruby Rails Plugins. And go down to RESTful Authentication. Click on that. And we basically just want to copy in that URL. And we're going to open up a command line and install that into Ruby on Rails. So let's bring up our command prompt. And we're going to create a RESTful app. So we'll go Rails. And we'll call the application My Rest App. And click Return. And it generates the skeleton for that REST app on our local drive. Once that skeleton is generated, we want to install the RESTful authentication. The way you do that is we're going to change to the My REST app uh, application. And then we're going to run the following script Ruby, uh, script forge plugin install and the address that we copied from the TechnoWeenie site. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. We'll just change directories to the My Rest app. And we'll type in, let me just bring that down so we can see it. Ruby script forward slash plugin install and then I'll paste in the address I got from TechnoWeenie and return. And I got an error basically because I'm a bad typist. So let's try that again. Ruby and this time let's spell script correct. S C R I P T forward slash plugin install and paste in that uh TechnoWeenie address and now hit return and RESTful app is being installed. And so now my RESTful app is installed. You can see there's a readme file there that we're going to take a look at. But at this point, we're going to finish up. And next time, we're going to start with basically manipulating RESTful app into the condition that we need to get it to work with Flex. So see you next time. And we're really looking forward to continuing with this series.